Thank you very much for the kind introduction. Yes, uh, uh, questions during the talk are especially invited. They help uh, um, energize the, the discussion. Otherwise, I will just, I have lots of slides. I will go uh, in a rapid pace over them. Uh, but first of all, I uh, just say uh, thank you for uh, uh, the opportunity to uh, speak here today about formal methods uh, at Microsoft. And um, it's, uh, in particular, it's, a, it's nice to be in a venue where proper LaTeX funds are used for the temporal operators. Can you move your lavalier up again? Yeah. Okay. I see. It wasn't turned on. Oh, okay, good. I thought I turned it on. That's why. Yeah. All right. So let's start uh, dive in and um, wow, what a sound. Uh, so uh, uh, formal methods are used uh, throughout a um, longer pipeline uh, ranging from design to uh, diagnosis of, of running systems. And I will be covering several of the tools. Um, and, and as you can see, TLA plus is um, uh, well in, in design processes. Uh, and there are some, uh, some other tools that uh, cover the, the other range. So here's the, the roadmap to the talk. Uh, so I'll give you a tool-oriented view of formal methods. Uh, and I will talk about lots of tools. Um, in particular, I'll go over the tools from the point of view of their scientific heritage, the target use, their impacts, and North Stars, what this thrive for. Um, <clears throat> There's lots of material, yet it's very, very par partial. I will not be saying anything about TLA+. Plus. Um, it's much better covered by others. Uh, and there are several other important tools that are completely left out of this uh, talk. It's not uh, any uh, statement that they're not formal methods tools. It's simply uh, 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 the, for the purpose of scoping uh, this talk within the uh, time frame. Otherwise, we could spend a few days. Okay, so then the tools are categorized under two rough categories. One is based where logic uh, is used as the calculus of computation. And other sets of tools take what I would characterize as a tomographic view of computation. You take a cross slice, you observe um, aspects of computation and make inferences based on the observations. Um, in, in the end, I will uh, talk about network verification. That's an area where I've been more involved in. And um, shamelessly, I, I position it as a, uh, both using uh, logic and tomography. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so the, the main um, cl classes here are symbolic model checking, model-based testing, program verification, concurrency tools, fuzzing, and then network verification. Okay, so as I claimed uh, logic as the calculus computation co coined by Zorman and Aaron Bradley um, in their textbook uh, as the uh, uh, title of, of a textbook on SMT solving, um, the, the claim here is that uh, when we reason about computation, uh, the, the calculus uh, that's of relevance here is logic. And that's, uh, say, in comparison with calculi, say, um, differential and integral calculi that uh, are used for physical systems. And there are corresponding tools for the different uh, uses of calculi. Um, and, and a claim I think has uh, evolved over the years is that practically all modern uh, program analysis tools involve solving logical formulas. I guess the claim was true before, but uh, they have uh, tools for solving these uh, or default tools for solving these logical formulas and don't have to reinvent such tools. Uh, so uh, set three was developed since 2006 um, and was targeted at uh, software systems and, um, and then over time it's been applied uh, over a wide variety of other domains. Um, for example, I will talk about the first three domains, uh, network verification, verified crypto libraries, protocols, and security risk detection. Um, uh, but you could also use it for uh, uh, optimizing assembly line uh, scenarios. So these are typically uh, constraint programming or operations research uh, domains. Um, the, uh, the technologies 
between the different uh, solvers and their uh, target users um, are all, also have some shared basis. Um, since I'm giving the talk, I've shamelessly put uh, uh, SNT solvers as the most expressive and very efficient uh, engines. Um, but the point here is that they borrow and, and, and uh, get inspired by technologies honed in the um, in the respective domains of SAT solvers, mixed integer programming, constraint programming. Um, so, for example, uh, the main search. Uh, used in SMT solvers remains um, heavily based on SAT solving advances uh, since the early 2000s. Uh, mixed integer programming uh, for solving arithmetical formulas, it uses uh, dual simplex mixed integer programming uh, global inferences. And uh, the, the notion of global propagators uh, is essentially uh, what's used by specialized solvers to cut branches early. But there's also a, uh, uh, say, say a development happening the past five, six, seven years, uh, which is um, that since SAT solvers is essentially the um, main ed uh, workhorse between uh, behind efficient constraint programming these days, it's not just global propagators. So the, the SAT solving uh, developments have also influenced uh, CP. Um, and on the other side, uh, we're looking into uh, using uh, set three, four CP domains. Um, there will be no theories, uh, theorems in this talk, but uh, I point you to a website. We have an online guide. You can uh, play with uh, set three online. Uh, it runs entirely in your browser. It gives you a tutorial on using the input format, uh, a shared input format called SMTlib, uh, used by the SMT community. Um, and, and I, will share, uh, I can share the, the link in a more readable way um, afterwards. So, uh, so now the first category um, I will um, uh, discuss is uh, symbolic model checking. Um, breakthroughs in the uh, computer-aided verification community in the late 90s included predicate abstraction, and that became a uh, uh, foundation for uh, the tool uh, SLAM, uh, a static driver verifier, a model checking that's used for static driver verifiers. Um, and uh, after SLAM, uh, follow on tools, Yogi and Coral um, refined technologies and, and made uh, the, the model checking more scalable and remained uh, used for uh, mainly uh, driver verification. Um, now, there was another thread of um, using uh, constrained horn clauses. And here the idea is that you can encode uh, the symbolic model checking problem as an SMT, as a logical formula, and solving. And now it's uh, the question is whether you have engines to solve such classes of logical formulas called constrained horn clauses. And so the claim is you can take the program uh, control flow graph that's an input to the uh, symbolic model checkers and encode that entirely in logic and solve for. And uh, there's a sequence of tools developed, uh, again based on uh, influences from the early 2000s um, and insights of this encoding of uh, solving for proof rules it amounts to solving horn clauses. Uh, and today the spacer tool that um, is, uh, is um, a component in set three is a solver for such horn clauses and it's embedded in a larger tool called uh, Seahorn. So just say a little bit about Seahorn. Uh, so uh, Seahorn is not a Microsoft research tool. It's developed by Ari Gurfinkel and collaborators at the uh, University of Waterloo. And uh, what you can see um, roughly here is that it uses horn clauses as the target formalism after an LLVM, a program, um, analysis uh, and, and middle end. Uh, so the horn clause format, the logical format, is really the this, what may semantic anchor of the um, what gets checked. And then uh, there are different ways of solving horn clauses. Um, uh, one can run uh, abstract interpretation is a way of, um, say, approximating solutions to horn clauses. Just give an example of uh, constrained horn clauses. Um, here I'm encoding the McCarthy 91 function. 
uh, as a relation between input and output. So if the input is greater than 100, the output is x minus 10. That's the first line. And then the second line is uh, you make two recursive calls if the input is less than 100. And then uh, the, the specification is in the last line, which me says that um, whenever you compute an output and the input is less than 101, the output is 91. Um, so that's an example of encoding the, the program and a partial invariant, uh, say a, uh, a partial correctness co condition, um, in, in a set of horn clauses. And now these horn clauses have a solution. Um, you can solve for MC such that all of these implications are true if and only if um, the uh, invariant holds. Um, now, uh, up to uh, completeness. Now, uh, the second uh, category is model-based testing and model programs. Uh, and uh, this uh, line of work uh, started in the late 90s uh, with, um, with the quest of using abstract state machines for uh, uh, designing systems. That was the original goal. Um, the, the, uh, the goal posts uh, moved over time and uh, the tools uh, became uh, mostly adapted by the test organization. And um, so a big uh, use of the tool uh, was in uh, model-based testing. Uh, actually, in, in uh, 2002, I started in the uh, core file systems group and developed a distributed file replication service. And uh, we used ASML uh, to specify our protocol um, was a prototype did in, in, and model checked in, in from an OCaml uh, model. Um, <clears throat> but the, the ASML uh, specification, and it looks very similar to a TLA plus specification, I'll say, um, it was, was appreciated by, the, um, by my peers because it was a readable, a high level description of what was under the engine hood in this uh, replication system. It also uh, helped a lot, of course, in, in uh, crystallizing the, the protocol design. Now, the, the, the current model-based uh, testing tools uh, are Bosky, Ivy, and, and Sen. I will talk about Bosky and Sen. Um, and they have different uh, target uh, users. Um, so Sen, uh, and I will return to Sen later, uh, but just a teaser, it uh, gives you a... Um, uh, a front, a library, a Zen is a library for .NET in C Sharp. And it gives you the ability to write contracts in uh, expression language. So it uses .NET reflection and link, so uh, integrated query uh, formalism, uh, to uh, write uh, formula, uh, programs that evaluate to uh, terms or formulas. And then those uh, uh, formulas can be used as, as uh, uh, to feed into verification or test case uh, generation. And it's used in the context of uh, network verification. Uh, that's a big, uh, say, target application. Bosky is a programming language, uh, and it is uh, very uh, well, um, say, positioned for the, uh, say, high integrity um, contract uh, uh, scenarios and, and, and two two uh, two uh, two scenarios was used is uh, in financial compliance and uh, where there's an open source uh, foundation um, that uh, uh, is basing their intermediary representation on uh, concepts developed in the Bosky uh, language and Bosky itself can provide verification test case generation uh, so here's an example of uh, of Bosky code. Um, and it illustrates uh, the use of, of uh, the type system where you can uh, give a uh, regular expression as a type declaration and then strings can have regular expression, can be typed according to the regular expression. Uh, and, and then type checking uh, will take the regular expressions into account and now you can write your contracts with regular expression and, 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 uh, and also refinement types. The second example is, is an example of a say, subtype, refinement type. Um, the, the, the other use of Bosky is around cloud APIs. And um, 
uh, I'm making the bold claim that this is the, fu uh, the future of the cloud is there, the, the API. So it's uh, what keeps the cloud together. And, and one current effort is around a uh, language layer that makes it easy to uh, write uh, common specifications that map into open API and, and uh, uh, gRPC uh, and, and other backends, but it allows you then to write, so Busky, uh, you can embed Busky um, contracts in this higher level language and then use that for mocking or fuzz testing. Now, systems code verification ha has a, uh, uh, lots, of, lots of tools, uh, verification tools, and um, a rough uh, way of um, uh, categorizing them is that there's a set of tools that are based on, on the boogie uh, verification condition generator um, developed in the early 2000s. It's really a, a um, simple procedural language uh, that is designed to be a back-end to higher level languages. Um, and, and then that procedural language, uh, you can generate formulas based on, on checking pre, pre and post conditions and invariants. And, and it's you know, represented as the, the, uh, the happy, uh, uh, free, free spirited uh, verification um, uh, angle. And, and the, uh, the other is the, um, is the serious uh, functional programming type theory uh, based where you have uh, proof rules and, and serious notation and, and full use of, of LaTeX uh, uh, capabilities. Um, and, and those tools uh, you know, include uh, the, the F star uh, language that we'll uh, cover in more detail um, and several other um, tools. Are, and, and there's some uh, newer that, that um, uh, Verona and, and Virus. Uh, that, that uh, I think we can uh, w want to uh, touch on. Um, some use uh, separation logic. Um, common to these is that it, it, it carries the, the use of, of uh, logical, uh, uh, say, say um, uses. Yes? Verification conditions. So when you have a piece of code with either it's a refinement type or a pre-post condition or invariant, uh, uh, to check correctness of claims, of assertions embedded in the, in the code, uh, there's a process of generating uh, proof obligations. That's the commonality that, uh, that I see, <laughs> that, that, that's most visible to me. Um, they, the, uh, the tools on the left don't use boogie. Um, that's one difference. Um, uh, they, they, uh, they, they may, um, uh, and they, there might be some very s more subtle reasons uh, wh why, why they're not, um, but it, it's, uh, uh, the, the, um, you, you could say that the ones that are based on separation logic would uh, solve the heap reasoning within the language, and, uh, and if you, uh, you, you won't be able to do this uh, language-based heap reasoning within the boogie level. Okay, so, um, so F star uh, gives you a logical foundation for programs and proofs, and, and it's mapped to various backends, OCaml, mainly WebAssembly and C, um, and uh, even uh, assembly code from the verified, uh, there's a verified assembly code plugin for uh, F star, um, uh, you can do uh, concurrent distributed systems. Um, there's, there are efforts in, in generating Rust code uh, these days from F star. Um, this is take the, 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 uh, with the point of view that F star is the uh, uh, center of where you uh, perform the proof oriented programming. Uh, and we'll see that there are, uh, say, competing or uh, alternative ways of uh, um, addressing the, the uh, what to do about Rust. Um, Everparse um, uh, generates verified parsers, and uh, there's a slew of other um, uh, fr uh, front ends or, or um, uh, scenarios where you can uh, use F star. Um, um, it's been uh, 
developed over the past at least 11 years. Uh, it's, uh, F-STARS is based on existential type theory. It, it's developed uh, with the point of view of uh, verifying proof obligations with SMTs, so automated uh, reasoning, um, with backups for interactive uh, uh, proofs. And um, so, so, so the, the automation is really first-class citizen, and, and then, the, uh, then the interactive proof is uh, taking as a second class in, in this uh, scenario. And that's common for many t tools developed in our group, maybe because of some, um, uh, say, institutional uh, influences. But it should also be said that we have tools, so, so Lean takes, I think, a, a very different angle is the, the you develop um, it's a logical framework and, and develop proofs in um, everparse is a uh, I think uh, a, a very exciting application um, use of F star um, and uh, so it uh, whatever parse allows you to do is to describe using uh, uh, C like uh, languages augmented with uh, constraints. Uh, so what you can see here is is a uh, side constraint on fields in a record. The major version has to be one, and the minor version should be zero. And the min and max are related. What the min is less than or equal to the max. That that signifies what is a well-typed package. And then Everparse will develop a parse. Uh, will compile uh, this declaration into a parser, a checker. Uh, and the parser is uh, so provably correct with respect to what you specify here. And uh, it's, it's been used in the uh, hyper um, uh, switch, um, I think, since 2019. Uh, one thing to note is that uh, the, uh, by, by looking at the historical bug report for the hypervisor, 30% uh, of the bugs uh, prior, prior to ever parse uh, were in the parsing code itself. So the code that parses bytes into structs uh, from the network, uh, and these uh, packets are, come from arbitrary, untrusted sources. So, so uh, bugs in these parsers can be catastrophic uh, to, to a hypervisor. Um, so now all of these parsers are, are uh, uh, verified, and um, it amounts to uh, a, a a fairly significant amount of the code base as well of, of, the, of the hypervisor, just the processing the input and output. Um, uh, now, uh, parsing is, is, I think, to me, uh, a very exciting application because it's so fundamental and, and used in, in places like the hypervisor. Um, uh, cryptography is a, uh, was, the, I think, the... Um, the uh, main goal of uh, ever, um, the Everest project around F-Star. And around that uh, was the development of verified cryptographical uh, library. And um, uh, many, uh, uh, um, many efforts in the formal methods of verified crypto have been around developing code and then extracting, compiling this code into object code. Uh, and, and uh, you verify the high-level code. But the, unfortunately, you don't get uh, efficient code uh, this way. So the most efficient code you can get is, is written directly in assembly and then re-optimized based on properties of the uh, architecture. Uh, so the Veil project will verify assembly code directly and be able to verify um, uh, stream ciphers, in this case, that are uh, much more efficient uh, than the ones you get from uh, refining code. Uh, so the Evercrypt uh, library uh, or effort uh, covers a set of uh, cryptographic uh, primitives. Uh, it lets you uh, recompile into different uh, targets depending on what versions of compilers you have, what architecture. Um, so it has that uh, built in. Um, for the, for the uh, pluggable or agile API uh, variant of Evercrypt. Uh, there's also the, the assembly version in the middle column. Um, so th this is, uh, I think, uh, another uh, nice, uh, uh, say, application of the verification angle. Uh, now we're going to talk about uh, a newer system. 
And the, the introduction to this is that, uh, so by Chris Hargwitzel, and he, he, um, he showed this slide at a seminar uh, last week uh, to our group. And um, he noticed that in the systems community, SOSP and OSDI, since 2009, well, in 2009, there was the seminal paper on SEL4 uh, operating system verification. And then since 2014, it really exploded with a large number of papers on verified operating system uh, modules. And uh, he categorizes these as um, one, one, uh, uh, one set of tools is based on automated reasoning uh, on the left, and the other set of tools is based on, on uh, interactive theorem provers. They also target different uh, languages. So uh, C and Go, uh, LLVM, uh, assembly, and even Python I see here. Um, so the, the uh, so there's a, uh, uh, there, there's a choice of tools and, and language. So what's your reasoning methodology and what's the language that you use uh, with respect to operating system code verification? And when it comes to uh, Rust, uh, that's, uh, has emerged as very popular in the systems community, uh, the question is, what's a good way of representing Rust verification? Should you use a verifying C compiler, or should you uh, verify Rust code using uh, Daphne, uh, so the Boogie Daphne uh, toolchain, or even F star? And in the previous slide, I had uh, a Rust connection with F star, and that's certainly also uh, developed. And you can say that Rust is uh, somewhat like C and C++. It has these features. It also has some features that you will find in, in uh, uh, functional programming languages, such as um, algebraic data types and pattern matching. Um, but it's also unique. It has uh, type systems uh, to uh, ensure uh, safety under concurrency. So, um, so, so there's a various project in collaboration with uh, Zurich and CMU uh, that uh, takes the point of view that Rust is the medium in which you both develop the code and develop your uh, proof tactic and, and, and proof language. So, so that's the uh, self-contained package. Uh, Steel is based on F star and takes a different route. It says uh, Steel is a, uh, is a DSL for, um, for separation logic. And within the separation logic uh, tool set, you can express uh, safe concurrency. Uh, uh, Armada um, takes a refinement-based approach, uh, uh, whereas Steel fixes the uh, concurrency primitives. Armada is a concurrency primitive agnostic, mainly. Uh, Verona is another uh, project from uh, Microsoft Cambridge uh, that is uh, a, a clean slate uh, or a principled approach to uh, a Rust-like uh, programming experience uh, is one way of, of characterizing them. So they each have their uh, north stars. Uh, so if star, I characterize that as starting out with full stack security. Uh, Steel um, aims to, to uh, scale to the next order of magnitude of systems. Um, and and uh, Veros is the, the Rust uh, verification approach. Okay, so now I'll talk about uh, switch gears and talk about the tomography of computation. So I, I didn't find a, any famous tomographer, but I found a famous top, topographer. Topographer, is, of course, is, is around uh, the heights, uh, uh, mapping the heights of, of uh, mountains and hills. Um, so uh, Cassini and, and the son and grandson uh, created a topographic map of France. And it, so it has, these topics, uh, notions are of course related. Um, and and uh, so to illustrate what, is, uh, what, what I mean by tomography is uh, some sequence of uh, execution dependencies. And way of, another way of visualizing it is using uh, graph layout tools. Uh, here I'm using uh, a graph layout tool currently being developed in our group. Um, so the concurrency testing tools are, um, fall into this category of tomographical tools. Um, they have a heritage starting from um, 
I'm choosing very soft and spin to represent explicit state model checking and stateless model checking, uh, respectively. Um, and uh, they, they have inspired a set of tools developed since the early 2000s. Uh, and um, they, they have uh, evolved into uh, two main tools, uh, Torch and Coyote, that are used uh, uh, heavily nowadays. Uh, so I think it's, it's worth, uh, uh, say, understanding that there is some uh, technological, uh, uh, say, heritage between or an inspiration. KISS is a tool based for verification, but the main idea in KISS is to bound context switching such that you can map it into a verification tool. And CHESS is not, a verification, uh, not based on program verification, but used uh, by um, manipulating the scheduler. But it uses the same uh, concept of bounding uh, the, the context switches to limit the state space exploration. Um, so these tools, uh, in a nutshell, uh, control the, the scheduler uh, and um, to drive executions into diverse states and cover, um, cover scenarios that are uh, dissimilar. Uh, Coyote is open source, and here's the, uh, a screenshot of uh, the, the GitHub page for Coyote. Um, and it's been used in multiple Azure services. Uh, it, um, so, so in a nut nutshell, it, it, uh, you design, uh, when you uh, develop uh, one of these services, you use Coyote as part of uh, the design process. Uh, it's a part of the code. It has uh, then, um, it started out with P-sharp, which ha was based on state machines. You should write your design using state machines. Coyote, uh, introduced uh, support for .NET intrinsic, so now you didn't have to write things just using state machines. And a newer version of Coyote is uh, for C++ code, so uh, same technology, say, same technology uh, but different surface uh, level. Uh, Torch is uh, below the design level. It, it will work with arbitrary code, and then it will infer a uh, a synchronization primitives. Um, furthermore, it will also uh, infer uh, causality relations to uh, limit the, the uh, so to, to um, make the state space exploration more effective. Uh, and, 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 and then it also injects uh, faults and services. Uh, so this has a much wider uh, scope and set of tools that are used. So I don't have a list of, of those tools, but it, it's one internally, it, this is not an open source project, but run internally on, on uh, hundreds of thousands of tests each day. Fuzzing is the second uh, in, um, exemplar of uh, tomographical tools. Um, and uh, th I think a big breakthrough in the f uh, symbolic execution uh, world, fuzzing is of course much older, uh, came with Dart and Qt in 2005. And it was, in fact, uh, a reason for me to uh, uh, transition from distributed file systems into SMT solving. I thought symbolic execution was an excellent application of SMT solving. Uh, so we set out to build tools. Uh, I was mostly involved with PIX to begin with, but also ported Set3 to Sage as soon as I could uh, uh, have a chance. And uh, so these were the, the early tools for um, the, the first tools for symbolic execution, PEX is for .NET and SAGE is for assembly. And uh, SAGE evolved into a cloud service. Um, but I, I will talk uh, just about Wrestler and Hyperfuzzer uh, in, uh, here. So Wrestler is, a, is not based on symbolic uh, execution. It's, ba it's a, um, it's a uh, stateful uh, fuzzer uh, without... Um, assumptions about having access to the instructions being executed. Um, and it's also open source. Uh, the, they are, uh, uh, it, it takes as input an open API specification, and then it can test for various, uh, say, say um, asp, uh, v various uh, ways of in, uh, that the web service interacts. 
Um, and I would categorize these uh, test approaches in, in four main um, categories. So uh, one is to run the fuzzing with many different inputs against the same service. But RESTful is also stateful. It allows to run uh, uh, one, one uh, test after another against the same uh, web service and then uh, based on the, the uh, with, with uh, remembering this uh, and exploiting that you have a sequence of states. Um, but furthermore, you can, uh, RESTful is being run uh, to do regression verification. So if you have the API changes version, um, you, you can run, uh, the, 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 re, uh, the fuzzing is run for, for regressions. Uh, and in the cloud service uh, uh, scenario, uh, the, uh, you'd also look for uh, dissimilarities based on where the web service is run. Hyperfuzzer, um, is a hybrid between symbolic and, and, uh, and, um, and, and non-symbolic execution or random uh, execution. Um, and what's interesting about hyperfuzzer is that it uh, fuzzes a, a hypervisor. Um, traditionally, you would need an operating system to tell you which instructions were being executed to, uh, to feed that into a symbolic execution engine. Uh, but you don't have that in the hypervisor. So uh, what does it do? It, uh, it uses snapshots of the virtual machine state, which you have, and, uh, and also uh, you, get, uh, you have knowledge about the instruction sequence as uh, you have the, the, uh, the, the instruction uh, uh, cache uh, and, and, uh, and compile program. Um, uh, so, so the, the, um, the uh, and and um, and from that it recreates the uh, the instruction sequences that are run on particular um, instances and can fast those. It found uh, 11 bugs uh, in the hypervisor, um, and just note with that uh, the bug bounty on one bug is quarter of a million dollars. So these are not small. These are not uh, the the. Uh, nimble, uh, uh, simple bugs that you would, uh, um, uh, so these are quite significant. So let me finish on to, uh, the network verification uh, um, angle. So uh, in network verification, in a nutshell, what we ask is what is a correct by construction network? So um, a buzzword in the networking community is intent-based networking. And the reality is then what runs on the network. Uh, we, we approach this uh, from a, uh, we've been approaching it from a PL uh, uh, cross networking angle. Um, so the, the, the ideal of verified networks is, uh, say, a combination of taking inspiration from Tony Hoare's ideal of verified software and uh, and one, uh, and from the networking uh, world, uh, what TCP/IP really uh, pro uh, uh, provided was an abstraction layer uh, that uh, would um, that that uh, defined uh, the um, the protocol uh, independently of the underlying transport. Um, so, uh, so TCP is is the intent. Um, we have a longer uh, history of developing network verification tools, starting with tools for uh, firewall uh, verification, and um, and then uh, develop and, and then looked for uh, if we can verify uh, access control policies on one device. Uh, what is uh, what should be done for verifying uh, reachability properties across networks? Um, and uh, the, the, the big challenges were, were that scale and methodology, what methodology would be scalable. Um, and in, in, uh, in the later years, uh, Azure has uh, formed a group of, of, uh, uh, for network verification and reliability. And uh, there's been a, a, a good, uh, say, acceleration in uh, developments in this uh, 
uh, angle. Uh, so w one, uh, one instance of network verification is that we verify the, that the routers in the data centers are uh, routing packets on the shortest paths and uh, on, on all, all po uh, in a uh, equal, co in a multi-path way such that you ha also have redundant paths. Redundant paths help with uh, load balancing um, and, and, um, and congestion, and avoiding congestion. So um, the methodology that we then use for checking that you have all pairs of paths between the green top of rack switches, uh, and the, so the green top of rack switches, they use either the, the blue switches or the yellow switches to bounce off uh, to get uh, from one to the other. And what we then check is that they, they use the shortest paths and they use have all redundant paths available. And we check this at one time, uh, a, a few, uh, four or five times a day for all routers and all data centers. And, and it amounts to a, a large number of checks, but each check is extremely uh, easy. Uh, so we can, uh, it uses relatively small resources. Um, Spark and Sin, uh, uh, were now developed as tools that came uh, a bit after that we deployed the the, um, uh, the router, uh, the, the instance that you see here. But it really a, uh, gives you a tool to develop such checkers. And I just want to illustrate how Spark and Sync can be used in this instance of checking all pairs of uh, reachability. And um, the po point that we checked the all pairs of reachability relied on that we could do local checks on each router. So Spark gives you a language to interface with a network topology and devices. So it has these as, uh, as uh, say, primitives uh, and gives you a way of parsing into uh, a notion of device. And then you can write a program that checks, um, that checks a device and using the language of writing formulas for the checker, so the, the, the formula that checks that for a given a prefix, uh, the, the, what the router um, has in its current state and forwards to equals what the specification, the expected prefix should be. So that's what we check for in a nutshell. But this, is, this can be written in a few lines of SEN code, uh, which I think is, is the uh, t main takeaway here. Um, as I said, we have multiple targets for network verification uh, and, and tools developed. So the blue ones are tools we deployed, the greens are papers, um, and then the target are the network-wide or router local. They are internal or used by customer or customer facing. Um, there's a notion of whether you check things at runtime in the data plane or the tools that provide the configurations that the control plane. Um, and, and there's a, a lineage between the tools as well in, in terms of uh, methodologies. Uh, the, the main tools are symbolic solving, uh, SIN, uh, as I mentioned a few times, uh, the network crystal, uh, ne uh, so open network emulator, and uh, network logic solver. Uh, uh, the network, uh, the network, um, E emulator uh, runs virtual machines with the uh, distributed uh, protocols for uh, networks, uh, control plane computation. The uh, network logic solver uh, uses techniques from uh, model checking to uh, very, in a scalable way, uh, simulate uh, control plane. So the, the, the controllers that are also run by this. But this is much more scalable and um, will we'll expose uh, bugs uh, based on uh, that, that the vendor protocols may, may implement the standards in diverging ways. Um, and these tools are, are come together in a uh, network change verification system. That's a system that's run uh, prior to deploying uh, large changes in net networks. Uh, so it's been used on hundreds of migrations uh, since, uh, since deployment. And it, uh, so what, what a migration will do, it, it will have configurations that say 
what, what's the network and how, what's the policy on the network. Then it runs through these simulation and emulation tools that gives you a data plane that's then checked using uh, the Spock, Zen, and Z3 uh, verification uh, tool chains. Um, and, uh, and it's really uh, prevented uh, dozens of out outages so far. Um, then uh, on top of Zen, we're building a tool called uh, Zen Guru. Uh, it, it allows to do uh, network verification of uh, customer uh, uh, networks. So, so in a virtual network, uh, customers uh, describe their connectivity um, and, and then you can check uh, reachability. Uh, so uh, again, this is the same slide I used, uh, I used before on Sen, uh, just to recall that you write, the, uh, uh, you write the policy, the specification of each of the, of the, uh, of the uh, virtual network devices in this high-level language, and then that maps into uh, the backends. And that comes into uh, light here, where you, you'll see a, a set of instances of uh, virtual network uh, um, uh, appliances. And uh, you could either verify them each by mapping into this low-level uh, logic, um, but that's not uh, uh, very convenient. So what Send does, it, it allows these simpler translations that live at the level of the intent or the, the uh, at, at the abstraction level of the network appliances, and that takes care of map mapping into backends. Uh, I would also say that the network verification is a uh, place of many confluences of uh, what we find in the formal methods. Here I'm calling it programming languages. Um, uh, so, uh, and, and the software defined networking world. Um, so there, there's uh, good uh, learnings to, or good aha moments uh, as you uh, work with the, in the networking world, I'm sure. And as happens, uh, I think, all the time with, in the formal methods community where we work with different domains. Um, so I'll finish up here with a summary of the uh, topics I've covered. Um, uh, I talked about symbolic model checking, model-based testing, verification, concurrency, fuzzing, and network verification, so thank you. Yeah, so I think it's really interesting you're talking about all these um, formal systems being used in like live production, real applications. Since this is a TLA Plus conference, is there any such use of TLA Plus in a live production application? Uh, I mean, um, I have a colleague who, uh, uh, so, so in the networking world, I, I have a colleague who used it on, on a system called Zookeeper, and he uh, uh, had, had an instance where, where the uh, protocol, the deployment had a bug, and he went back to the design and, and found the bug and the design. It was a really <laughs> a design bug. Uh, and, uh, databases, and, but, but uh, I, 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 I have less... Um, I'm less of an expert in this than Marcus uh, and, and others, so it makes better sense. Hi. I'm curious sort of about the operational perspective of something like uh, NCVS. Who ultimately is responsible for describing the changes that are going to happen? Um, what kind of overhead does that impose on sort of different parts of the organization, um, different engineering groups? Uh, okay, the, the, um, <laughs> I have high-level operational uh, um, interface. Uh, so the, 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 the first question is, 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 uh, is the change uh, specification, uh, the network engineer, not the, uh, not the verification group, but the, the, the ones who are designing and deploying the networks. They sit in the same building close by each other or, or uh, in adjacent groups. Uh, but, but then uh, the, the point of NCVS is uh, it's a sandbox. Right? So they would otherwise have to deploy it in the wild, but they're not. It's run through this, the sandbox. Okay, so this is something where it's set up so that they 
are still working in whatever their native configuration language is, and that's getting tra translated behind the scene? So the languages are just the, the normal uh, uh, configuration BG, uh, policies, BGP policies. So the languages are they're not special languages for very, uh, it's the, they're, they're unchanged. Um, the, the intent, the, uh, the, 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 uh, what, what is the specification of what is good and bad is, uh, is a, I think it's a combination of baked in uh, global properties or that, that, uh, that, that are, uh, and, and properties that you can express um, uh, in an ad hoc way. Um, but so there are uh, reachability properties that are global. Um, the the organ there is, there is a process of using this, making sure that the tool gets used in deployments, and uh, that's run by the the uh, network verification team and is really a uh, you know, organizational social process. Great, thank you. Okay, um, so with the advent of tools like Copilot, AI-assisted programming, do you think formal methods are going to have a, uh, a demise in front of them, or do you think that formal methods are going to become more important? Uh, hints of what, what I should, I mean, it's, it's a fast search, right? So Right, it, it cuts uh, out stack overflow from your programming tasks, but if you, if you Imagine five years from now, it comes stronger, and looking at these studies that came out of, um, that they did for Copilot, that some, quite a significant number of users of Copilot just unconditionally accept what the AI synthesizes. Do you think that Copilot, uh, formal methods are going to play a bigger role in everyday programming or a smaller role because of it? Uh, I well, I mean, we, so in our group, we have projects around uh, test, uh, uh, testing uh, co-pilot. So what does it mean to generate te uh, unit tests, and how do you evaluate unit te uh, testing? Of? And, and there, there are uh, other projects uh, around on, on integrating proofs with uh, uh, code that's synthesized. I think it's, uh, for me, uh, if you ask me personally, I, I think it's just an opportunity. It's a, it's a fast cache of, of good hints, right? So it, it will, if I'm automated reasoning, I want uh, to narrow the search space. And Copilot could narrow the search space, and you can uh, exploit it. OK, thanks. For the network uh, verification system, uh, it's some of the variables that you're formally verifying are probabilities. For instance, latency. How do you deal with variables or distributions rather than logical? It's not something that I've worked on. Uh, I know that in the uh, networking world, uh, similar to the OSDI and S in, uh, OSDI and ASOSP conferences, there's a uh, there's been an explosion of verification, and it includes also um, uh, verifying protocols for congestion properties that uh, amounts to a timing uh, issue. Um, so I don't, okay, I don't have first-hand experience, but you can, uh, but, but there are certainly, uh, say, say, approaches to this. Whether they use uh, probabilistic model checking techniques or verification is depends. Thank you. This isn't the uh, most well-formed thought, but um, I'm very interested in allowing um, very, you know, low-skilled, no-skilled, you know, software to be created. So letting people who have maybe degrees in accounting, business, whatever, create software, very scared about the software that they're making running in, you know, our environments where the data sets, the, you know, um, information that they may have access to is extremely protected or sensitive. Where can I look to employ some of these tools to help me verify that the software that these people are creating aren't violating, you know, some of those properties uh, quickly, right? I know I can do it, just I'm having trouble scaling it. So mm -hmm. like, where can I look to uh, learn more about applying those techniques at that type of scale? So, so, so you're interested in, in um, uh, so, so the, the software may not be the, uh, the cryptographic 
fancy code that goes in, and and what can you do for the uh, for for uh, you know the software in the wild, uh, and and then at, at least uh, raise the quality bar of that. You know what? Right. I can uh, imagine an Excel sheet, right, that does you know important calculations against a financial model where that data is actually really sensitive. Uh, so what we do uh, in the networking world, for example, is to check. Uh, Say, say, uh, blanket or common properties across policies. So the policies are the code. It's the analogy of the code, and it's uh, the co what the customer puts in. And then we check for uh, violations of common properties. That uh, so, if 10% of the customers make the same mistake, we will catch it across 10% of the customers. And it's similar to what I think is what static analysis tools have done with having rule sets of, uh, that, that are specifications that work across code bases. It's, so we call it the um, beliefs. You, know, you have a belief of a, a so, uh, it, it, it's, it's not, not a con virus, but um, dos so, um, so that, that, that I think that, that would take us. I think we're also out of time. Sometimes the oh. mic, yeah, oh, it's good, okay. So uh, we will take a 10 minute break, then we will